What happens when one of the most used apps on the planet suddenly opens its doors to developers? This isn't another feature drop. This is when ChatGPT stops being a product and starts to be a platform. If you've ever built something, an app, a script, a workflow, even a little hack that helped save you some time, this might be the biggest opportunity you've seen since the App Store. Because this time, your app doesn't live on a little website somewhere that nobody visits. It lives inside ChatGPT, an app that hundreds of millions of people use every single week. And if you're watching this, it's probably because you build things. Or maybe you've been waiting for a sign to get started. This is your sign. Let's talk about what ChatGPT apps really are how they work, and why they change everything. And why this really looks like 2008 when Apple pivoted the entire world around something called the App Store. By the end of this video, you'll understand why I think this release really matters. We'll look at four live examples inside ChatGPT today so you can understand what it looks like to use these apps. And then we'll zoom out and I'll talk about why I think this represents an opportunity to change the world with a new economy for companies, apps, and developers going forward. It may not happen, but if it does, it could change everything. Let's dive in and take a look. Okay, first a few callouts. What exactly are ChatGPT apps and who can use them? They have already been released, I think, to everyone in the US. They are not yet available in the EU and UK and a couple other places that they're trying to come to. They said they would bring it to the EU shortly. I'm not really sure of the entire worldwide rollout, but it really is trying to come very soon. In ChatGPT, if you're a free user or kind of a plus user, pro user, those kinds of users can get it. But if you're on EDU or enterprise projects, those also are delayed and coming soon as they work through a couple of the security models, I believe. But first, if you're using ChatGPT, what does it look like to you? First thing is inside of the ChatGPT experience, if you hit this plus button and under more, at the bottom of that list, you'll start seeing the apps that are already connected. These are the apps that you have relationships with already. You can also go into settings, and when you go into settings, there's an apps and connector area. Inside of here is where you can start connecting these new apps. And here are the apps that we'll be playing with a few of. I have not connected them yet. You can select here to connect them if you like, or you can connect them when you use them. And that's what we'll be doing. So the first thing that we'll do here is we're going to use Spotify and take a look at app, you know, connecting to Spotify, what it looks like, what the privileges are, and what you can get out of it. Okay, so if we're gonna use Spotify, there's a couple ways to do it. If it was under more, I could select it from here, but I haven't connected yet for this example. I can come in here and say Spotify, and you'll see that it pops down here as a connected app. Uh, this is just because I've named the, the application directly. If you don't know the name of the application, there's other ways to get it. So if I come back and do at Spotify, you can see the apps that can be connected here. Other things, these are my custom GPTs that are also showing up. Uh, so that's the ways that right now it's easiest to kind of put them in. I'll just say Spotify, a modern pop playlist. All right, when I hit enter there, what it's going to do is it's gonna call out to Spotify, realize that I haven't had a relationship with it yet. And theoretically, it only makes this connection one time. It will come back and say, do you wanna connect this application? And once I say yes to that, it will then come back and say, here are the privileges that you're giving that application, because there is a certain amount of how much information you're sharing from your chat over to these applications. So you can see Spotify comes up and says, do you wanna connect? We say yes, and then it's says you're in control, apps may introduce risk, and here's the data that's shared. All right, once I connect, it makes that connection one time. I will log in with Spotify and then be right back. All right, after making that connection, Spotify is bringing up an inline uh, kind of experience. So Spotify itself will put an experience here within ChatGPT and most everything we'll be seeing is within ChatGPT, but you also have affordances to jump out to the applications, of course. You get an inline view of many of these applications, a large screen view, both within ChatGPT, and then a launch out to go to the app itself. Okay, and here it comes, Spotify is saying it's working on a modern pop playlist here. Taylor Swift's number one, great news. All right, and then we have more information below. I can open in Spotify, or I can just go ahead and 
make changes here. Let's use another app to see how we can kind of have conversations because this isn't it. It's not a one-time call, here's your web results. This is an interactive experience that you get. All right, let's try another one. Let's try Zillow. Let's by doing at Zillow. Great, that will bring this in. Show me houses in San Francisco between $500,000 and $700,000. All right, we go through the connection again. Zillow is now connected. Here we go. Okay, excellent. So here is Zillow itself. And this is kind of in line of this conversation. So as you're moving around in a conversation, you can just ask Zillow to bring up this panel. And it's a live panel within ChatGPT itself. Now, what's neat about this, of course, is if I zoom in or out, it's just the natural Zillow experience. It's updating the way Zillow would if you use that application. So this is a live version of this application or kind of a portal into this application, which is very, very cool. You can also go into essentially full screen. So you get a full screen Canvas still here in ChatGPT and can use the application a little bit more directly and feel like you're within the application itself. But let's imagine that we also want to add more information. Let's imagine that I wanted to make this request in a neighborhood that's friendly to kids. So again, I'm just using ChatGPT natural language here. It's calling out to Zillow, of course, with the information that Zillow might need. Zillow has its own intelligence uh, implementation. So what you get on the other side of this, for example, had I asked something specific of Spotify to add certain things in and it didn't, it's actually more related to how Spotify itself is implementing its intelligence, not necessarily the chat GPT communication. So again, each one of these is implementing its own intelligence layer to do its work. Mileage may vary as these applications each roll out. All right, and it says here are the homes between this and that that are in neighborhoods, Lo Noe Valley and other places. Let me come out of the full screen view. Uh, Glen Park, Bernal Heights, Inner Sunset, West Portal, excellent. So that's kind of nice. How about if we get them near a park? All right, here are the ones near a park for that price range. And how about three bedroom? No homes matching your filters were found. Three bedrooms, 500 to 700,000. I can't say I'm real surprised about that. But let's go up to one of our previous search results here, go back into full screen for this example, and go into the details on one of these homes. So as you can see in this full screen example, this is really a full blown version of Zillow, whatever they wanted to deploy in their application. So it's not just tiny little portals or results that we've seen in web search. All right, so I've got an idea. Let's, uh, let's get a diagram from Figma because it connects Figma. But let's give it a shot and ask Figma, create a diagram showing how a conversation with an LLM works. All right, once again, it goes through the connection and I have a Figma account. I can do it without an account as well. All right, Figma is connected and working on uh, the question. So once again, it comes down to how that system itself has implemented AI and what kind of intelligence and, and rules it's using. So this really isn't a problem with ChatGPT. As you'll see, it turns into this very big kind of diagram that is kind of completely sequential which makes sense, but it's kind of difficult to make any sense of. So let's go full screen so that we can see what's in here uh, and say, let's turn this into, do me a favor and turn this into a sequence diagram instead. All right, here's a sequence diagram. It shows flow of conversation with LLM step by step. So this looks pretty good. Uh, not necessarily knowing what U C T E L D N O are, <laughs> but that's from the previous diagram. Once again, mileage may vary, but this is a good start. What this is also doing is it's updating my personal Figma account with this diagram in it and updating that file again and again as I iterate through it. So really a very cool interaction and a way to kind of work using AI from ChatGPT itself. All right, let's try one last one. All right, one more, and it's kind of an interesting one. Canva, any of you that haven't used Canva, it's kind of a design tool that allows you to create uh, images and icons and uh, slides. It's an all-in-one sort of application. They do have, I think, a, a free aspect. I am, again, a subscriber of Canva, but they have a free aspect that you can use. I would highly advise going and checking it out if you haven't looked at it. It's a very easy early entry mechanism to be able to create some graphics, but now that it's in ChatGPT, I expect their usership to explode. So let's give Canva a shot. But before we do, Let's hit this plus button so that you can see, here's all the applications that we've connected. So the, the idea is they just keep growing. The more that you have here, the more will keep growing. 
we're going to ask Canva to work on a file that I have. Here is a file that is kind of a markdown file of all of the things dealing with ChatGPT apps, specifically what we're talking about. And I'm going to ask it to create a slide deck out of these. Now, of course, this could have just been a previous conversation that we were having, and I could have said, ChatGPT, tell Canva to create a slide deck from that. Same thing would have happened. Okay, I think we're getting used to the pattern here. Connect to Canva. Be ready. Okay, Canva is connected and working on it. All right, and here it is. And one of the neat things about Canva is it, in this case, for slides specifically, it creates a few variations of those slides so that we can see the different versions of slides that it came up with here. And okay, let's take a look at one of these. Look at this one. Here are the different slides. And this was the set of markdown information that I had. So very cool, pretty successful version of slides, quite frankly, as I've tried using many systems to create slides for me in the past. Model context protocol, front end UI integrations, open source resources. This is great. So this looks exactly like what is on my markdown file itself. But let's say that we wanted something with a kind of a red feature color. I want a dark theme with red highlight. All right, Canva's off working on its thoughts. All right, here we go. Interesting. All right, those look pretty good. Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> I don't know how correct any of these images are. Again, back to this is the provider that's doing this, but still pretty cool, frankly. All right, so that's kind of it. And if you're seeing the design or if you're seeing the pattern here, which is you can just ask for something in the middle of a conversation, ask for an app to help you with it. Imagine if there was a weather app and I was having a conversation with ChatGPT about I am going on a business trip next week. Uh, what's the weather going to be like? And it said, do you want me to use this app to show you the weather? That's going to be far better than it going and doing a web search and hoping that what comes back feels trustworthy. And in fact, of course, the design will be much better as app designers get to put this stuff out there. And that's really what I want to talk about. The most interesting thing here isn't these particular apps, though I will say these are pretty good implementations of this. There's something really wonderful about all of this. Okay, so that is ChatGPT apps. And that is launch day ChatGPT apps. They're very performant. They work very well. Um, I will say there's some hiccups here and there. Spotify has been having some trouble of not responding every now and then. But this is really day one. It's not surprising that there's going to be a little bit of bump. They have said that they're going to open an app store for submission in the near future by the end of the year. And that's only a few months within the next few months. I cannot advise you enough to consider putting something out even if it's ridiculous. It looks like there will be a review process, et cetera, et cetera. You might be able to just put out apps that you're interested in, but others might be able to use as well. The interesting aspect here is what might happen for enterprises. We haven't seen the enterprise rollout for something like this, but working deep inside of one of these enterprises, I will say there's a real value in imagining being able to put out internal apps that people within the enterprise have access to that have access to internal information. This could be a real game changer. Okay, in 2007, Apple had a fantastic device, the iPod. It was a world beater. It was the thing that really lifted their whole company. They, at that moment, said, we're going to do the same thing for phones that we did for music players, and the Apple iPhone was released. Now, it was not a smashing success. It was not small, but at the same time, it was not what we see today. So it ended up with a couple million sales in the first year, which is a tremendous amount when you look at other uh, mobile device carriers at the time. However, it's not the ridiculous number of billions that we see right now. The difference between those two was what happened one year later. After a few million people bought the first phone, and that was the audience that they were talking to, they said, Developers, we're about to open something that we're going to call the App Store. And now we all know the App Store today. This story is well told. We are sitting in front of the exact same surface. But it's at least 100, maybe 400 times a larger audience. And just that alone means every company is going to have to respond to this and put something in the ChatGPT experience so that you can get to Amazon and you can get to Target and all of these other things. Name an application, name a service out there. They will have an app. Even if this wasn't going to be a success, it is very likely to have a lot of momentum. I would say don't miss it, especially if you're a new engineer. If you haven't ever built any application, 
this really gets gets you into a place that you can start doing at least one thing. You can move forward that small step. Do you have a little widget that you want to put out? Do you have a little tool that you use personally? These things can already be built. The Apps SDK is already out there. We'll take a look at it in a future video. But I just wanted to say, this is a moment that you cannot ignore. Ignore it at your own peril if you're interested in building things. I just want to make sure everybody hears it, whether you're inside an enterprise or not. I think they will also open this up for enterprise developers to do things that are internal. That story is still not unfolded yet, but we'll see. This is a very exciting moment, and I want to make the call out very, very clear. So hopefully this has helped. Hopefully this has excited you a little bit about what the ChatGPT apps actually look like today, what they can do, and really the potential that they have. I think there's a huge market out there. This could change everything. It might not change anything, but the likelihood of that is so low compared to it changing something and the potential that it could change everything. So really take a look, I think dive in and, and just play around a little bit. If you're looking to build literally anything, try an app, see what it works like. All right. Thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.